Hello, fellow YouTubers. I'm back. I'm not only back from vacation, I'm back on YouTube. Been a few months, I guess you could say, since I've posted a YouTube video. But I did. I just got back from Orlando, Florida. Uh, had a nice little vacation. Going to come home and work for like a maybe seven days. Then I'm going back to Florida for another week. I guess what's the advantage you have when you work? Uh, it's gonna go on starting my 20th year here in August and saving those vacation days and building up those personal days and and uh, you know I'm just getting to the point in life that uh, I'm gonna start taking those days because I have worked days when I didn't feel like working so I'm taking advantage of it so that's what I'm doing I haven't worked a full week since the first of March so this next week I'm gonna have to work five days I've worked four in a row and that was pretty tough but I've been doing stuff here at the house and really enjoying myself. Uh, I shot some video footage back several weeks ago. I've actually shot uh, different kinds of video footage on things that we're doing this summer. You know, a little bit different because of uh, the way we're having to do things. And uh, what I'm going to post today is going to be, I guess I'm posting these videos backwards uh, because... Uh, I've done some videos on some cleaning, uh, you know, vents and uh, what I'm doing in the classroom since we're not waxing them this year. But I'm going to post this video first because uh, this is really the mode that we're in, uh, is uh, stripping and waxing floors. Uh, we're not wet stripping floors and haven't wet stripped floors in a long time because we do a square scrub. And uh, really don't have any talking much going on during this first part of this video where we're uh, doing the square scrubbing. Uh, just to kind of explain some things that we're doing is uh, you're going to see us start out with a square scrub machine. We're using a, a 3M maroon pad uh, on the floor. Uh, we do put a little bit of water down to keep the, the dust down and that's strictly all we're using is some water and a 3M, <coughs> a 3M pad. Then we go back and we suck it up with the automatic uh, scrubber and rinse it, rinse our edges. Uh, and then uh, it's ready for wax because there's no pH level change in the floor. There's no anything. So uh, you're going to see us doing that. And I do do some talking uh, during the waxing part and some different camera angles. I was using my phone. I didn't have my uh, my action cam with me that day that I was doing some waxing. And that's actually what I'm going in to do tomorrow is do some more stripping and waxing the same way. And uh, so maybe if you do a square scrub, you're thinking about a square scrub, maybe you get an idea. Uh, you, you know about this and y'all guys at square scrub you know share your comments your opinions uh, we all do things different uh, to be honest with you our crew is not real strong this year and i had preferred the rinse and be done a little better than what you see on this video but uh sometimes i go back and i do some re-rinsing myself but i'm not gonna work myself to death you know trying to make things perfect uh, we're gonna make it through this summer and uh, maybe next year things will be a little bit better, but we're making it through uh, this year. I will say this, I did put, uh, uh, we took like three coats off and I put three coats on my haul and it, it really, really looks good, the part that I've got done so far. And I, I've waxed this year, I haven't got to wax in a long time. I've always been up front stripping floors and uh, I got to wax this year myself for a long time, you know, the <clears throat> first time in a long time, and I, I, I'm a little bit heavier waxer, and uh, I really, really think I'm gonna be happy with the results and being able with the upkeep of this floor this year. So, uh, just take a look at this video, uh, you know, thumbs up, thumbs down. I honestly gotta give it for the footage I've shot, it's probably about a thumbs uh, rocking, because uh, it's not the best video sh shooting of, of anything or that I've done. But anyway, maybe to give you a, a kind of an idea and just let you know your guy, you, let you guys know that I'm still alive and I'm still out here. So uh, if you are not of uh, part of our Facebook page, I'm gonna put a link in the description below and uh, follow us on Facebook and uh, that way too. So y'all have a good day. And uh, I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna do an outro on this video or not. So, I mean, I do some kind of outro music, but I don't know that I'm gonna do uh, anything shooting at the last, cause I'm trying to do all this stuff from home and uh, everything too. So I just wanna say, uh, go out there and clean some, some floors, scrub some floors, put some wax on them floors. Cause you know in about five minutes, they're gonna be scuffed up again. Have a great day.
Okay, I stepped in a classroom to kind of to uh, explain this because it's office people's kind of walking up down the hall and his stuff. So what you've seen is basically how to, you know, use a square machine. I did not definitely go into all the details. I kind of done that on a video in the past where I done a little bitty section in a stairwell during Christmas break. But uh, you can go back and watch that video. I'll try to remember to put it in the description here. But uh, you can kind of see the steps. The only step I did not put in the video was rinsing the edges with a mop. But uh, you do that. I always do that behind the mop machine. I let the mop machine get as close to the edge when I'm running it to, uh, you know, get as much as I can get up. You know, let the machines do the work for you as much as they can. So what you're gonna see here is I'm gonna start out here in the hall uh, where my filling station is. I'm just going to uh, have a rug with my mop bucket and I'm gonna pour wax into the bucket from there. And the reason for the rug is, is to keep from splatter, a place to stop. Uh, you're gonna see that I'm stopping kind of in the middle of the hall. That the reason is because that's where the office main entrance comes in and the office people are here and I try to give them a heads up and then we're kind of having a dodge uh, where they're installing security cameras this summer and different things. So that's gonna be our stopping point. Then when we come back and strip that part of the hall, that's where our starting point will be. So here we go. Uh, I've changed shoes because I don't want to get wax on my good shoes because I'm always getting wax on my shoes and you can't unlace them and all that stuff. So I got some just some old junker shoes I keep here uh, to do that kind of stuff in. Uh, so I'm going to show you how I apply wax. Some of y'all have backpack systems. Some of y'all use microfibers. There's different ways that different people do uh, waxing on floors. And you basically have to do what your school system furnishes. Uh, I don't particularly care for the mop that I'm using. It's a rayon mop, but we have a different type of rayon mop. It's a loop-in. This is not a loop-in mop, and I really don't care for this mop too much, but this is what they sent us, so this is what I got to use. So <clears throat> I'm going to uh, lay a coat of wax around my edges, and then I'm going to uh, go ahead and come up the hall. I only put uh, one coat around my edges, my first coat and my last coat, there's no sense in putting a coat around your edges every time you do the haul. That's not where people walk. It's up against the wall. And if you're not careful, you'll get a buildup around your edges. And when you go to strip floors, that can really give you a fit with a lot of scraping that you have to do. So here we one go. Other, one other thing before I get started. I always put you up some signs, let your administrator know no teachers need to come in your building, whatever parts you're waxing in at the time. You need to put up signs on every outside door that leads into your building in the area that you're waxing. Make it well posted because you don't want somebody walking in on your freshly wet waxed floor. Okay, I'm waxing by myself on a hall and I have to kind of pace myself at how far I'm going to wax down the hall. So I've already done this session going out to the stairwell with one coat. All right, I'm gonna lay my wax down on my edges. And I don't want my wax to be getting sticky on the edges when I do my mop drags when I go to apply wax on the center section of my hall. So our hall has like got these little columns and I usually go with one or two columns <clears throat> at a time. So you just kind of pace yourself. You you learn how fast to wax you are. And uh, so you just kind of pace yourself. You've got about, I don't know, I'd say two minutes on your edges. It depends on the humidity, the air, whatever, before you start getting that drag, but you don't want to drag a hole out uh, on your edges. It's kind of like painting, I would say. You know how it is, it's painting. If you're painting and you, and, and you go back over a section, you know, it's dried a little bit, it's gonna pull a chunk of paint out, or it's gonna leave some really bad brush marks, it's just not gonna look good. So, 
I'm gonna see if I can get an angle with the camera here of uh, the waxing. I don't have my head cam today. I'm using my phone. Okay, this is our first section with our first coat of wax. And what you do is you just continue to go down your hall, repeating that same process, edges in your center, all the way down the hall. Just to keep in mind that on your mop bucket, when you're wringing out, don't sling your squeeze you way down hard on your mop because you don't want wax dripping all off your mop bucket and all that stuff on your floor. You want to keep it clean, keep your wheels clean, and just try to maintain it. So this right here is my my ending point. I already said my starting point. My starting point. Okay, and I'm going to go down the hall right here to these doors, and that's going to be my ending point. Well, you know that's about you know 15, 20 feet. I'll flip the mop. I get 10 about 10 feet per side of the mop with a good coat of wax. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> what I will do next time, because I have an exit at the other end of the building down there that I can get out of. And what I will do next time, since this doorway was my ending point, I'll let it be my starting point. And I'll have more wax on my mop. Then I will mop this way to about halfway. And I'll flip my mop when I get about halfway. Then when I get to this column, a marking place, kind of make you some visual marking place, right? Right there's an emergency light. You know, just a plug-in or whatever. Just kind of get your markings down your hall about how far you want to go. But see, since this would be a starting point here, this time it would be an ending point the next time. I'm kind of in the middle of the hall trying to explain this, but it will work out every time. If I, if I end here, I'm gonna start here next time. See my finger? End here this time, start here next time. Okay, if I'm starting here, I'm gonna end here next time. And what that does is it, it doesn't work out perfect, but if I'm coming here with a loaded mop in this section of four or five tile wide every time with a brand new loaded mop, I'm gonna have a kind of a buildup area right here where I'm standing, where you see right here where I've stopped. <clears throat> and what I do is when I've got that mop and it's getting kind of dry and it's getting thin, I'll overlap where I had started the last time, go out a little bit and get away from it. And just let it lap over kind of where you won't have such a buildup. I hope that makes sense. That comes with time. You kind of figure those things out. If you ever strip a floor, that has a buildup on it, and you have them places where it's thick, where you've overlapped, you'll learn not to do that. You'll learn how to fix that. You'll learn how to correct that. Uh, if not, you'll want to be asking some questions. Say, Man, I got some wax down here. I absolutely cannot get off the floor. It's just so thick, it's so gummy. Well, it's because there's a buildup, and you don't want that to happen. Now, this building right here is six years old. Six years old. 
We have never, ever put wet stripper on this floor. From the day that it was built, we've been square scrubbing this floor right here. And we square scrub it. You can see the difference. And we take uh, three coats off. We put three coats on. And we we done this building right from day one. And we haven't had any problem with this floor, with any kind of buildup or anything. And uh, anywhere in our building, you see me doing floors. Uh, it's been seven years I transferred over here to this school. And seven years ago, we done some wet stripping and we haven't done any since then. We've done square scrubbing and we've had very, very good success. A lot safer and our floors look really good. Uh, if you prep them right and wax them right, you know, some people think more wax is better, but that's not necessarily true. Uh, yes, you've got to apply enough wax, but just gumming and packing and packing wax on, uh, that's, not, that's not the answer. That's not the answer at all. Uh, you want enough on there where you can maintain your floors. Let me turn the camera on. Here's just a tip for using the bucket system on Fisco. Take a lunch break, but if you was in between coats or whatever, I always bring my wringer in my closet and rinse off any waxes on it because if not, it's gonna have a bunch of buildup on it. It really makes it really hard to work with. So that's just a good tip. Clean your equipment up. Take care of it. Take care of you. Okay, I'm putting the last coat on. What I like to do, I'm doing this one-handed, but I'm gonna kind of show you, is I really pay attention on this last coat, keeping that mop really flat and overlapping where I won't have any streaks. And I also, did my edges again. You see those streaks right there? They're showing up. So I'm in some pretty good light. Okay. Then we'll flip my mop over. And I'm basically just walking beside my mop. Instead of doing the swinging motion like I'd be regularly mopping the floor on these last coats. I walk with it. Yes, it takes a little more energy, a little more time, but this will really, really, really make a huge difference. And I know there's <clears throat> some of y'all probably watching. I mean, there's a lot of different methods of putting wax down. Uh, I've used microfibers with a uh, backpack system and all kind of things before, and. I guess expense or whatever, problems with people not cleaning up the backpack system correctly. And I don't know what the reason is, but we don't do those kind of things anymore. We went back to the old fashioned way of doing things, which just works. Uh, this is more, I don't know. I guess you, I could say this way of putting on wax is uh, you get heavy spots this way. I really liked it when we had the backpack mop system uh, because you didn't have to stop. You just mop, hit a button, spray some wax, and just keep on a going. And this right here is what the final coat looks like when she's dry. Like I said, it's been seven years since we put any wet stripper on this floor. We do the square machines. We do this every year. We get really good results. Now what you see in there, that dark spot was from a rug under the water fountain. Left that spot on the floor, it won't come up. So, I don't think it's too shabby. One thing I like about this year is this is the first time I've got to wax my own haul in a number of years because we always have a crew and I'm always up front stripping floors and uh, then we have somebody else waxing and my haul hasn't seen this much wax in a long time so I really believe this will 
this will show up for a while and last and buff out beautifully when it needs buffing. And this is the hall right here that never has ever seen wet stripper. From new construction, I think, I don't remember how many years I said, five. I know at least five years, possibly more. Because I was the one that actually stripped and put wax on this floor the very first time and everything's always been done with a square scrub machine. And we have no buildup. So, if you're kind of stuck on wet stripping, I'm sorry. <laughs> because I'm telling you, square scrub, if you've got your floors in really good shape and you start square scrubbing, it is the way to go.